All right, all right. What's going on, guys? Guys, Troy TXRC Productions, Chef PV here, ATX Drone Space, drone and multi rotor tips, tricks, reviews, and unboxings. So, we are today going to talk tuning on Libre slash Open Pilot, but we're utilizing Libre. If you don't know already, without getting into details, Open Pilot, Libre Pilot, same thing. Open Pilot split up. The guys that continue copter controls for CC3D went over to Libre Pilot. The rest of the guys stayed at Open Pilot. They're doing their own things, blah, blah, blah. The setup and all the stuff I'm going to talk about right now is going to be specific to either Libre or Open Pilot. Either way, it technically will work. But if you're using Open Pilot, you're more than likely running an old version of the firmware. And I highly suggest bounce over, find our uh, video on how to flash Libre, get Libre over there and start using it. Now, the video that we're going to make right now or what we're going to talk about is going to be for a lot of new users and especially specifically guys that are utilizing the Esheen 250 or any of the other kind of ARF kits that are really set up and really uh, aimed at the demographic of new entry-level pilots. And these things are great for entry-level pilots. No matter what anybody says, I beat the heck out of this Esheen, flew it, it flies great. It flies like a brick, this one, because it's so big and heavy. Um, that being said, the Falcon is a new version, which is more ZMR kind of style, QAV style, and it's much lighter and smaller. Um, it's a great value. Both of these copters are great values. Anybody that's watched my videos know I'm not a professional. I try to share as much information that I've learned or that I've gotten through this experience that I have had and try to make it very relatable to you guys out there doing a lot of the same stuff and stumbling through it. Um, that being said, if you hear me saying something that's wrong or I'm not correct in my terminology or my understanding, that's fine. Please help me understand and teach me. However, I have made this kind of my mission to do on my own. I never tuned re until more recently because for me, I was just trying to get through all the other stuff and figure out how to keep this thing flying and get me flying and getting better. And once I reached a point where not having a fully tuned copter was affecting me being able to do more and more stunts and get better and progress, that's when I dove into tuning. Before that, I just kind of went with the flow, learned what I could, took numbers from people, did quick wizard setups, and just figured out what worked for me, and it worked. But I've reached a point where oscillations and bumps and vibes are showing up in my video. My flights are getting nice and smooth and I'm doing better and staying in the air much longer. And it's time for me to tune these things. So that's what's gotten me going. And seeing all the questions asked on especially the entry level groups and forums for e-sheens and stuff like that. I just wanted to help everybody out there with what I've learned. So last thing, if you're going to take advice from somebody on some topics always make sure you ask follow-up questions. If they tell you, especially adamantly, that something's not great or something else is better or whatever, ask them why and how they know it. Great example is yesterday I had somebody telling somebody that a diversity receiver would be not a great idea and it's a waste of money and it's not necessary. And he was right for his situation technically, but that being said, the information is factual in saying that a diversity receiver is actually really great it's not that much more expensive than an already regular single receiver. And it can actually improve your flight because it's improving your visibility and your distance and depth and everything. So that person that was saying it was not necessary had never flown one. Um, just make sure you ask people how they know what they know before you take their advice. Um that being said, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're trying to help people, just try to help people. But try not to overreach. If you don't understand something, be the first to say, I might be wrong, but this is my thoughts. Just say. All right. Dig deep into this. Here we go. We're going to open up on your screen Libre Pilot. Always make sure you open up your GCS no matter what it is first. We're then going to take our cable. And once the GCS is up and running, we are going to plug this bad boy in. They don't make it easy on the e -sheen. All the way in there. There we go. Props off. Props off. Always props off, especially if you're going to plug battery power in, which I'm not going to in this one, but I always props off. So we've got our GCS loaded up here. Get it back into the screen. All right. You'll notice the TX or the, uh, the RX connected here. So we're good. It's actually connected to the flight controller. We are going to go and first, before we do anything, talk quickly about some terminology. Oscillations. 
Oscillations are, and I'm going to use another craft, oscillations are vibrations or movements that were not commanded by the stick inputs. So what does that mean? If you're hovering and it's vibrating or moving or twitching in the air, that's oscillation. If you hit the throttle and it bumps on its way up, kind of jumps, that's oscillation. If you go to bank at high speed and it skips, that's oscillation. If you go to drop the throttle or descend and it stutters, that's oscillation. Oscillation is, again, any movements not commanded by the stick input. It's actually basically overcorrecting itself in flight. You're working the flight controller and it's saying, oh, I'm not right, oh, I'm not right, I better twitch, I better move, I better blah, blah, blah. It's overcorrecting. So, tuning comes in play when you need to eliminate oscillations. Oscillation tuning is going to be technically through the PID setup. There is another way of tuning, which is going to be your expo tuning. Expo or exponential can be tuned on the radio or the flight controller. It's actually more recommended to do so on the flight controller, not your radio. Because by doing on your radio, you're actually changing the way that the stick command is inputted and sent to the controller. And therefore, the controller doesn't understand why it's doing what it's doing. It's just doing what it's told. If you command the flight controller to change its exponential curve, then it actually responds to the throttle inputs and it actually understands why and what it's doing. In theory, there's no difference, but it's better technically to just do it on the flight controller side and let the flight controller do all of the work. It would be, I don't know, there's examples all over the place, but it would be like, I don't know, but somebody else dribbling the ball for you and, you know, then handing it off to you to lay it up. Wouldn't you rather just drive the full court and lay it up? I mean, there you go. Good example, I guess, kind of. Um, all right, so PIDs. The proportional, the integral, integral, and the derivative. So don't worry about the words. This is going to be how you kind of can nail them down on which is which. The P is going to be due to throttle. So any kind of oscillation when you kind of put a high throttle input, you punch up a little bit, or however it is that you're increasing your throttle, whether you're flying you know, a straight line, you increase throttle to speed up and pitch forward, um, when you get those oscillations, those are going to be typically your p-value. If you get an oscillation, dial down a little bit, which means lower the number. When you get to the eyes, you're going to see those more in your descent. So when you lower the throttle and it kind of oscillates on its way down, that's going to kind of give you a better idea of your eye oscillations. If you see them oscillate that way, push them down. If it's not, push it up a little bit. Get it to a point to where it oscillates, and then again, back down just slightly until it doesn't oscillate. This is going to get you to your D, your derivative. When you get to derivative, this is going to be kind of more of an all-encompassing kind of smoothness. So when you go around a high-speed turn or any kind of really hard maneuvering on both throttles and pitches and rolls, you're going to get kind of a skip out of the turn. That's going to be a little bit more of your D value. Now, once you get D and your nice, hard, your, your nice hard movements down and it's nice and smooth, you might need to dial down or dial up your P and your I again just slightly to kind of match the full kind of, you're trying to get everything you can or the effectiveness out of your final tune. So that's going to be your PID tuning. That's all I'm going to give you. You're not, from there, it's all up to you. It's not hard. It's just a matter of, are you ready to take that next step into it, into trying to figure out what's best for you? And that's where it comes down to. Dial your PIDs in for you. Now, PIDs we've talked about. Exponential. It's very important, but I personally think exponential should come after PIDs and after rates. So exponential is going to be the smoothness of the input from the radio. This does not mean that turning the expos up or down are going to make you flip or roll faster or easier or quicker or anything. For that, we're going to first go to rates. So on your screen, you're going to see the GCS for Libre Pilot. And on this Libre Pilot layout, this is the basic, just basic um, rate tuning. I suggest you use this. Do not be afraid of the insane word right here. People freak out and go, oh, it says insane. I can't go that high. This is about in the moderate range where your, you know, e is going to come tuned out the box. 
These numbers represent how fast or how responsive the movements are going to be or how quickly it's going to make these movements. So though it says insane, it's not as insane as you think. In fact, it's pretty insane the low rates that they send out with this thing or that it starts you at. It might be okay for just getting up and learning orientation of just basic movements of a copter, but if you know how to fly a copter and you're just trying to learn how to fly FPV, these rates are way too low. Low rates are worse than I think anything else in trying, low rates coupled with self-leveling for too long or for not the right reasons are, a the biggest reasons for not kind of growing as an FPV pilot and just kind of getting frustrated, honestly. I personally think dive in. Use leveling and use low rates just to learn how to basically fly the craft and get it moving. After that, self-leveling is not going to help. It's going to actually take away from your learning experience because flying in rate mode you're going to have to unlearn a lot of the leveling and it's not going to make sense if you've flown a lot of self-leveling. So rates are the next thing. If you want to be able to do flips and rolls, you need to raise your rates. They started at 277 a minute ago, which means that the craft was going to rotate on a pitch or a roll or a rate or a yaw at 270 degrees per second. There's 360 degrees in a full rotation. So it was going to take one and a third seconds for this thing to flip all the way around. So one, like that. That's forever. A slow roll or flip is worse than not having or having no self-level and no rates and not knowing what you're doing, honestly, because you're constantly looking for the next, you know, where's the horizon and oh my gosh, where am I? For so long that you're not even anticipating the next movement. That's why quicker flips and rolls are actually better for you because you get it out of the way and you're on to the next movement rather than, oh my gosh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it's just slow rolls and pitches, man. You also have to be way high up there and that they lead to so many crashes. It just does. I'd rather crash because I did a fast flip and, you know, over rotated or didn't catch it in time than just a big, long, drawn out fall from 200 feet in the air, <laughs> uh, which I've done. So attitude is going to determine the snappiness or the kind of the responsiveness of the full pitch and how far and all that. So I highly suggest that you start in the very beginning of insane. Go to 130, 590, and 590. I really highly suggest it. If you want to put this on a second control for a second position switch where on the second flight mode you actually go to bank two, you can do that. It's really easy. You take go here, hit copy, go to two, set up the second one with different rates, and then you can go back to one and you can lower these down a little bit. So now I would have two different setting banks. Oops. So we're going to copy this to two, and then we're going to go to two. And if you wanted to do a third one, you could also do a third one all the way up, whatever you want to do. And now that would give you the ability to switch between them in the field. I promise you, you're going to end up on the high side. It's just what everybody ends up with, man. So that's how you're going to set up how you can flip and how you can roll, how fast it's going to flip and roll. Now, Expo, back to that. This is your Expo window. The higher the number, the more control you have before it actually goes into full input. So you'll see the curve dip down. This means that it's less sensitive at lower points. So as I press the stick just a little bit, it's not gonna kinda do as much of an input into the craft until I reach about 50% and then it's gonna go back to its kind of full you know, potential of throw. But I still get the full throw from from one side to the other, from you know low end to high end on my endpoints. That's why Expo is important. Not sub trim. You don't trim multi rotors. Exponential tuning and all of those things. So my Expos, I typically run roll at I think around twenty. Pitch around twenty. My yaw. I actually don't like it. Any expo on my yaw. I like snappy yaw movements. Um, I think it helps me corner better. So I run 20-20-0 pretty much on Libre. You figure out what works best for you. 
But again, I say do this in stages. If you want to do a little bit of expo to begin with, go to 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, something like that. But start with PIDs, move from there to rates, and then from there get into expo and figuring that out. It's my suggestion. You guys, these things are great. These things are fun. Fly safe, fly smart, fly for fun. I hope this helped. Somebody let me know if there's anything you want me to add or change or if I've got something wrong. I really appreciate all the input. Fly safe, fly smart, fly for fun. Fly FPV. Chef PV out. Peace.